What's been the trajectory of the human race in terms of understanding virtue and in terms of realizing our full capacity of what is offered to us as human beings? Um, it's been away from a more symbolic approach to something that better mirrors reality. That's in our thinking, what we care about, and uh, our more in-depth uh, perception in terms of art and creativity. You see some of that creativity uh, in children as they grow. Their brain's flexible, they are very creative. Uh, in other words, they approach things in, in a variety of ways. They aren't as um, blinded, you know, um, by a certain trajectory that they might have been inculcated with uh, later in their life. So how do, we, how do we move toward this lesser symbology and what, what does that mean in terms of, of spirituality? Well in spirituality you see a lot of symbolic sorts of uh, religious practices and things which uh, evolve from you know a, a perception of human need just as all mythologies do um, but there's also a trajectory uh, that we can see if we watch it over time and it is uh, increasingly a movement of uh, ourselves toward a uh, effective uh, uh, sense of virtue and uh, and a sustainable um, um, less easily shaken um, faith in uh, in the direction that we're evolving toward. Now it isn't to say that I'm promoting the idea that evolution has some kind of intelligence and that uh, you know there's something in it that uh, that is increasingly uh, ideal. What I'm saying is that the ideal comes from uh, what it takes for a social animal to better survive and thrive and pass on uh, useful information to the next generation. And we see a lot of that in science, scientific thinking. That's our new concept of truth. And we're getting better at it. We're uh, surpassing our common human delusions and uh, again moving from what might be symbolic to that which is uh, a better grasp of reality. So see that as you will that is how things are going. That in other words it may not be the evolution of the the best but it is the evolution of what best fits and what best fits seems uh, to lean in the direction of a greater um, and better use of those things in a human being that meet basic needs and uh, in terms of perspective 
The perspectives useful in meeting human needs are creative, objective, and empathetic, and um, and a communication with these things. Um, some some semblance uh, of uh, EQ or emotional intelligence um, can be seen in this process but it goes much further than that as far as you know you hear preaching going on well if you want to look at what really changes lives you have to look at uh, what gets in the way in the first place and that's uh, a kind of learned helplessness um, born of intolerable anxiety due to trauma and uh, including trauma from deprivation when we take a look at this we see that uh, when we run into this intolerable anxiety of helplessness that the only way that the brain can cope with it seemingly is to uh, symbolize the message and uh, provide s attainable symbolic goals you know or struggles that uh, uh, that are forms of addiction in a way so you're looking at it, uh, some some forms of addiction well it's how we survived um, traumas and so on so that that anxiety would not overwhelm us you see what I'm saying so there's a pattern there's a pattern to salvation from the helplessness to uh, a more uh, and greater uh, and better integrated sense of uh, optimism uh, integrated with reality so looking back uh, along this uh, looking at, at this problem how does it end oh, well first of all when you're in a safe condition the, the brain and the capacity of the human being is to be able to relive that uh, helplessness and unlearn it and uh, detach it from uh, those needs and feelings and their expression that were once blocked and symbolized and blocked by being symbolized so to the degree that you've unlearned helplessness around certain needs feelings and their expression um, you then achieve uh, the realization that uh, these needs as soon as you've realized them are actually losses the process that steps in then is to grieve the loss so that you can let it go it's another process in this line of change after you have grieved that loss that's when you can forgive from your heart others and other things that uh, you feel may have contributed to your earlier trauma the hardest thing of all is that uh, after you what to whatever degree done that you can begin to be confronted with the times that you have been a cause of other suffering and um, 
that's the hardest thing of all to look at because at that point you are less human, more monster. And uh, that's totally against uh, uh, the illusion that we, illusions that we give ourselves in order to uh, uh, feel uh, an essential uh, uh, self-worth, uh, a fit in society. But the great thing is, is that having felt that, really felt that, you feel remorse. Because you're now a more feeling person. You're less symbolic and more feeling. We're in touch with your feelings. We're in touch with the needs, feelings, and expressions that are so much a part of who you are. Having felt that remorse and uh, cried, um, that is the point at which you are no longer the person who did those things. So there's, uh, uh, with each of these processes and, and struggles, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And so, the preaching in this church is about that light, and about getting there, and about including as many people as possible into uh, a journey toward the light, and, uh, and toward our better selves. I think that sums up a lot of what needs to be said. Have a wonderful day.